oftentimes when working with vacuum systems, you will see these flanges here. These are called QF flanges. It stands for quick flange, or in German, they are called KF flanges, Klein flange. And they have an ISO, so they are normed. And what they use are these centering rings with an O-ring around it. You can get these centering rings out of different material, for example, PTFE, Teflon, and you can also get the O-rings made out of different material. And the way you would connect to components, for example, is to put the O-ring and the centering ring on one end of the flange, and then get your um, component you want to connect to your vacuum system on the other side, and you would use this clamp and screw it tight. And just like that, you've got a vacuum tight connection. The way these flanges work is that you've got a tapered edge here on the inside of the clamp. It is not straight. And you've also got a chamfered edge on this side here. So whenever the clamp is screwed down, the components are pushed to the inside. And if you've got an O-ring between the two components, as you can see, they do not fit there perfectly because of the chamfered edge. But if the clamp pushes down from the outside, both components get pressed together and sealed against the O-ring. But there are cases where you want to connect your vacuum gauge directly to your glassware. Or for example, you want to connect your vacuum system directly to your glassware to avoid the outgassing of your vacuum hose. And for that you would need a glass QF flange. And you can get them commercially, but they are pretty expensive. So I thought in this video I would show you how to make one of these glass flanges yourself. This way you can connect your vacuum gauge directly to your system, or you can connect your vacuum system directly to your glassware, or these are also pretty handy. I don't know if you have seen my cesium distillation video, um, but there I was using a glass tube with a glass ground joint on the end, and I've epoxied it to a metal tube that was coming from my still. And the problem there is that you've got a different coefficient of expansion um, in the glass compared to the metal. So if you heat the joint up, it will most definitely crack or maybe leak. And if you use one of these, um, the O-ring between the two flanges can absorb the different expansion rates. And this is a great way to connect um, a glassware to a metal. As a small disclaimer, these glass flanges work great and they are vacuum tight and I've hadn't had any problems with them but they are not um, the same uh, dimensions as this one. Sure, they are the same diameter, but as you can see, the glass flange does not have the tapered edge here, but it still works because the inside of the clamp has the tapered um, edge, so it will still get pressed in and seal against the O-ring, but of course it's not ideal. But in my opinion, they were great, but I wouldn't rely on them in really critical situations. To make these flanges, I started off by heating the end of a tubing. This tubing has a wall thickness of 1.8 mm and a diameter of 22 mm. To form the flange on the glass tubing, I'm using a 10 mm hex socket where I can press the glass tubing onto to create the lip that will make the flange. I'm also using a graphite plate where I can press the flange against to create a flat surface where the o-ring can seal to. On the right side you can see the centering ring that normally has the o-ring around it. And I'm using this centering ring to check if the inside diameter of my flange is large enough. Right here you can see me using the hex socket to create the lip. You have to make sure to center the tubing on the hex socket so that the flange will have the same diameter and the same thickness on all sides. 
I am then reheating the flange we just created to use the graphite plate to flatten the surface where the o-ring will seal to. By pressing the glass against the graphite plate you will reduce the inside diameter. So I'm using the centering ring to check if it will still fit. In this case it didn't, so I'm reheating the glass and using the hex socket to widen it up again. By pressing the hot glass against the graphite plate you can also control the outside diameter of the flange and it should be pretty close to the commercial one. You will have to go back and forth a few times. I've also used a form tool to open up the inside of the flange. But after a while the centering ring will fit and the outside diameter will be correct and you've got your glass flange. Before using the flange it should be annealed in an oven to reduce the stress. So this is the flange we just made and this is the centering ring for the o-ring I was talking about earlier. And as you can see with this flange it has the correct size and the lip here fits inside the flange so the o-ring can seal against the glass. And this flange here does not have the same diameter here inside and as you can see the metal ring does not fit inside the flange and the o-ring does not seal against the glass. If you clamp this one down the metal will press against the glass here and it will most certainly break and even if not it won't make a vacuum seal. As you can see the commercial uh, flange has the same diameter as the one we just made and what you would do is just use the o-ring and the centering ring and clamp the two of them together Let's test the flange on our vacuum pump to see if it's really vacuum tight. I'm just going to connect the flange to my input of my vacuum pump. Normally I have this flange connected here where I braced on this um, hose fitting so I can use a vacuum hose. I will just use a rubber stopper to close the end here up and we will see how the vacuum is after we turn the pump on. So I have connected my vacuum gauge and it is turned on. Let's turn on the pump and see how the vacuum is. As you can see the vacuum was exactly the same as if I've just closed up the flange here with a metal cap. So the flange and the connection between the glass and our stainless steel vacuum system is absolutely vacuum tight.